NASA's Open Science Initiative is really an incredible opportunity for people to um, interact with NASA's incredible scientific data. Um, it's really about including more people in the scientific process, opening that process so it's more transparent, and really, really enabling um, people that traditionally haven't worked within NASA to be able to work with the information that we collect. NASA IMPACT is a project at uh, Marshall Space Flight Center. It looks into advanced concept development, uh, creating prototypes, quick prototypes of uh, evolving technologies, and also fostering the strategic partnerships. Public-private partnerships are critical, especially in areas where external entities outside of NASA have a lot of the expertise and a lot of the capabilities. Without public-private partnerships, it's really difficult to, to bring the technical expertise and the scientific expertise together. IBM's collaboration with NASA started about a year ago when we were thinking about how do we apply this new technology called foundation models on top of geospatial data that NASA has. A foundation model is a base model that is trained on lots and lots of data without knowing the, the application uh, ahead of time. So our goal was there to create a foundation model so that people don't have to build it from scratch because of the amount of resources that was required. NASA's science data is used for uh, monitoring the Earth and looking at all the changes that happen in our environment. We took that data and then used that to build a geospatial foundation model. The HLS data, the Harmonized Landsat Sentinel-2 data set, it builds on the legacy of NASA's Landsat program from the 70s. And by combining NASA's Landsat mission and ESA Central 2 mission, we achieve a so-called temporal resolution, meaning how often we get data over the same place, down to two days, which is extremely important for any application studying environmental change, land surface change, and so on and so forth. There are many use cases uh, for uh, this model. Some of the ones that we have specifically addressed are around disaster. One example is flooding, so being able to do flood mapping after an event of flooding. A similar example is burn scars. These are a couple of disaster response related examples. We're training the AI to be able to sort through these images quickly and efficiently. So my role on the project was to take images of areas that have been burned through by wildfires. And I was able to build a data set of about six to 800 uh, labels. So I mapped where the burn scars were, and then I could train the model to do this. And the benefit of this task is now, instead of someone like me having to map out burn scars every single day for six, six months, the AI can do it as quickly as we can feed it the data, which frees up the scientist to use that data to actually answer questions, to address public concerns, and to do useful work as opposed to staring at imagery all day, getting to where we can do science. With all the data that we have, we have satellite missions been collecting data since the 1970s. By making all of that open and available to people, they can take all of that and feed it into these new tools and algorithms that we have that are AI biased. And that way we can make a more comprehensive study. We can make more comprehensive inference of how Earth is changing, how climate is changing, how the effect on people, and, and so on and so forth. Applying open science principles to the development of AI foundation models is critical to increase the trust, the transparency, and the actual results of what comes out of them. So people can use those to make decisions, potentially for environmental things, um, or, or to increase the knowledge of our, our basic understanding of the universe. We followed the open science principle from the start, right? We did everything in the open. But when we released the foundation model in the hugging phase, which is the open repository of AI models and data sets, we immediately saw community picking it up and developing their own applications. Last time I checked, there were about 85 plus deployments of the model by the community for different applications that we hadn't even thought of. We recently saw the model being used in a classroom setting to teach remote sensing classes. We also made the model available for the NASA Space Apps Challenge. There were about 42 submissions uh, from the community. So the proliferation of these models and data set following the open science principles, I think that was our in initial goal and I think we've succeeded in that.